knowledge. Oh, before I read that, can I stop? There's this fellow that I listen to some on YouTube. He's a preacher out of Arizona. And he's really big on this soul winning. And I mean, he just curses the doctrine of grace. I mean, I heard him preaching a sermon against Calvinism. And I mean, to the point that he questions whether guys like I are really even saved. And yet this same guy, they had this big soul winning campaign. They go on and, and he even has a YouTube where they give an example of how to win a soul to Christ. And you go up to the door and you knock on the door and you ask the person, if you died tonight, where would you spend eternity? And if the person doesn't say, he says, well, let me tell you a few things. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Um, have you ever lied? Yeah. Well, liars, liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. So you're in trouble. But God loves everybody. God loves you. And he doesn't want you to go to hell. And so he sent Jesus down here to suffer that for you. And all you have to do is receive Christ as your Savior. All you have to do is just believe on him. Trust him to save you. That's all you have to do. Makes sense? Oh, yeah. All right, then, well, just repeat after me. And then he says this little prayer of, Dear Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. And I thank you for dying on the cross to save me from my sins. And I'm trusting you to save me. Thank you. Amen. Or some something like that. And this guy's up preaching. All you got to do to go to have, have eternal life is believe. And he will say that if you really do that and you mean it, it doesn't matter what you do after that, you're going to heaven. You could go join a gang and blow away a bunch of people with a machine gun. You could go commit adultery. You could kill yourself. You could do whatever. You're still going to heaven because you, set, you accepted Christ. He teaches that. Yes. That's what I call turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. I've never taught that. Can God's children sin? Yes. Can they backslide? Yes. But let me tell you something. If they do, they're going to suffer for it. They're going to be chastened. And backsliding like that, I'll tell you something else. There's no evidence of election in that. Listen, anybody can parrot off facts. Even the devils, we, the Bible says, believe and tremble. I can take you to verses and show you where the devils believe. Jesus is the Son of God and call him that. I can take you a verse where they believe he's the Holy One of God and call him that. They're not saved. True faith is not just acknowledgement of facts. True faith is submission to those facts Amen. and the will to those Amen. facts. That's the kind of faith that evidences election, not just parroting something off like that. Furthermore, he tells the guy all you have to do is believe in order to be saved and in order to go to heaven. And so then he says, all right, now pray this prayer with me. And then they pray this prayer. And he says, now, did you mean that? And the guy says, yes. So well, then, you're etern- then you're saved. You're going to heaven. Well, wait a minute. I just thought you told him that all he had to do was believe. Where did this prayer and this prayer come into the equation? Where did that come into it? And then they'll go over that verse in Romans chapter 10 that says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I guess that's where they think the prayer comes into it. Well, wait a minute, folks. Believing and praying, last time I checked, are two different things. Now, you're saying there's only one thing he's got to do, but when you really distill it down, there's two things he's got to do. He's got to believe, but he's got to pray the prayer. But wait a minute. And again, they'll go to Romans 10, 11, or Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But read the next verse. How shall they then call on him and whom they have not believed? Don't you see that calling and believing are two different things? How can they call on him and whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? You see, calling and believing are two different things. So don't stand up there and tell people there's only one thing you have to do and that is believe and then tell them to pray a prayer to make it happen. You've just taught them to do two things. And then you'll tell them, well, it's not of works. You're not saved. We're not saved by works. We're not saved by works. Just by trusting Jesus. But wait a minute. And no, you, no pope can get you there. No church can get you there. You've you, you got to personally accept Christ. He'll say stuff like that. Well, how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And let me tell you something. Preaching the gospel is work. You think I'm not working now? I'll be exhausted when I get done. I'm working. I'm working hard. 
You see, if it's based on their hearing about Jesus presented in the gospel, you've got the works of man in the equation. And in its own way, it's no different than Roman Catholicism that teaches that you, have, you require the mediation of the priest administering the sacraments to get you to heaven. And these people think it requires the ministration of the gospel preacher administering the word for you to get to heaven. It's two systems of the same thing. Sacramentalism. It's just another version of Catholicism. But, well, I got away on that. Let's go back to... But here's the thing. He says that, uh, you know, if you believe on Jesus, then it doesn't matter what you do afterwards, you're saved. And then he gets up and damns the doctrine I teach, and even in his sermon questions whether I'm saved. Well, wait a minute, dude. I believe in Jesus. Come on, tell him. Does the, <laughs> does the fact that I'm preaching the doctrine of grace mean that I can't be saved? I thought you said anything I did after that, I'm still saved. But now you're saying I'm not. Wait a minute. What's soft for the goose? It's soft for the gander. <laughs> and these are the inextricable contradictions these people involve themselves in when they, mix the, when they try to teach grace and yet they mix the works of man in it. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 10. I mean, really, it, to me, just the thought. Millions of souls will go to hell if I don't do something. And I'm going to go to heaven after I've damned all these people. <laughs> oh, have mercy. Second <laughs> Peter 1, 5. 